like to thank everyone for coming out today. Uh, we're, today we're here to celebrate the grand opening of the Carlton Trail improvements. So most of the work you'll see behind us here is done, including the median and the new intersection. There are still lights to be installed. You can see the podium for them. Uh, we do have a couple honorable guests here today to speak about this, but first and foremost, a big thank you to the province for the municipal economic funding that we have that's done to boost our economy. So here to speak to that, we have her. Thanks, well, good afternoon, folks, and uh, what a great, great day for our last day of summer here in North Battleford. And it's uh, certainly my pleasure to be here today to speak on behalf of the and uh, Lori Carr and all of my colleagues in the Saskatchewan government. And I guess the good news is this is one of the last times that you're ever going to have to listen to me. <laughs> so that, that's the good news. Welcome, Your Worship. It's great to have an afternoon with you again, as always. So, but before I begin, I just would like to also acknowledge uh, that we are on the land gathered today of this Treaty Six territory and the homeland of the Métis. And thank you, Mayor Bader, and the local council, and all of the residents of North Palaver for the welcome that we received here today. And if I was to go back, probably just one calendar year back to the better days, I guess we could say. continue to deal with the impact of COVID-19 pandemic, our government is focused on continuing to deliver critical support to build our Saskatchewan economy and sustain our high quality of services. Our government has made in infrastructure investment the top priority in our Saskatchewan plan for growth. And today, I'm here to celebrate the announcement of the 2020 Municipal Economic Enhancement Program, the work which we see behind us here today. And this program distributes grants to individual municipalities on a per capita basis throughout our great province. With a variety of project categories, we are pleased that in 2020, we will be providing $150 million to local municipalities. The program not only makes a difference by quickly helping municipalities restore and develop key infrastructure projects, but it also provides funding for shovel-ready projects committees communities need to continue supporting infrastructure investment, stimulating the economic economy, and encouraging local job creation. The program has approved an investment of $2 million for $607,000 for North Mountain 100 Street Service Road upgrade. As well, and I think that work just started today, right, if I'm not mistaken, that's great to see. As well, is $1.4 million for the Carlton Trail intersection, which we see behind us here today and the roadways improvements that are nearly completed here now. Maintaining these essential services and amenities supports North Battleford's community by providing a financial injection into the construction industry, further developing the yellow sky area of the city, and replacing underground asphalt and sidewalks. These funds from the Municipal Economic Enhancement Program are just a small slice of the investments by the government. In March, the government announced $2.88 million in municipal revenue sharing for our city here. And that's about 149% increase from what it was some, some in 07 08. And this not only shows our commitment to this community, but the growth that has been created by our mayor and council in this city. And this year's funding is part of record levels of municipal revenue sharing, I think about some $278 million across this province. The government of Saskatchewan is committed to ensuring our transition back to a new normal is as smooth as possible. Thank you for your continued cooperation, Ryan. It's always been a pleasure to work with you in council here in the city. And when following public health advisory, we need to continue to do that. We see our numbers coming back somewhat. So I think I'd be remiss if I didn't mention everyone continue physical distancing, washing, sanitizing, limiting the size of indoor and outdoor gatherings. And we're going to continue with investments like these that will help build greater communities for all of Saskatchewan. And then together, we'll continue to build a strong Saskatchewan and a healthy Saskatchewan. Thank you. Enjoy the day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Well, 
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being here today, and thank you uh, uh, for your remarks, uh, Mr. Cox. It's uh, great to see you again. Um, I also acknowledge that we are standing here together in the heart of the traditional territory of the Indigenous Peoples of Treaty 6. This particular part of the city is actually named after a Cree leader named Yellow Sky. And we used to refer to this part of the city as the Southeast Quadrant. Uh, but when we went through our neighborhood development work, we started giving uh, uh, names to areas of the city. And we chose Yellow Sky uh, after considerable consultation uh, with uh, elders from uh, various uh, indigenous communities surrounding the city. The Yellow Sky area is the fastest growing commercial area in northwest Saskatchewan. Uh, a couple of years ago, um, a lot of what you see here right now wasn't here. Uh, there's two new hotels here. We have a brand new restaurant just opened on the weekend and, and uh, expansions of the Walmart property. And uh, City Council worked with administration to develop a master plan for this part of the city. We called it the Yellow Sky Master Plan. It went through traffic patterns and uh, opportunities for future economic development. One of the limitations that existed uh, at that time was the intersection right behind me. Uh, and the intersection leading into the Walmart and uh, the, the property in front of where Marchbrook Warehouse is there. What we had was uh, what we call a failing uh, traffic pattern in that um, the, the traffic levels as they were weren't safe and certainly wouldn't be safe to accommodate future economic development. So as we saw this property over here, the Comfort and Suites uh, being built, we knew that we had to upgrade uh, this, uh, this intersection allow for a more orderly and safe flow of uh, traffic. Um, last year, at the end of last year, the city received a development permit um, for a property just opened on the weekend. And uh, had we not identified this project and made plans to upgrade this intersection, we would have had to have turned down that development permit because we would have had an unsafe uh, traffic pattern. So. We, uh, we identified the need to proceed with that, but uh, we had a lot of struggles with funding that project. And that's why when the provincial government announced the Municipal Economic Enhancement Program, uh, we knew that this was a worthwhile project to, to apply, to dedicate uh, funds to. Uh, what we have here is then a, a rearranged intersection. We now have a right in, right out, uh, where there used to be a, uh, uh, a regular intersection. for more safe uh, uh, travels through this part of the city. Effectively, what this particular project has done has unlocked future economic development for this part of the city. So all that you see here, we can now accommodate new development in, which is really important. So when we talk about economic enhancement within the municipality, it's not just about this project and seeing construction activity. This uh, project will actually allow for economic opportunity for years and decades to come, which is really, really important. The other project that uh, Council identified um, to apply to the MEEP uh, program under was the 100th Street Service Road. And as you mentioned, Mr. Cox, the construction has started there very recently. That project has been in the works for 13 years. Uh, I used to call it a next year project. Um, and next year just never really came. We knew that we had to do something with that area. We have a very drainage system there and a, uh, a need to upgrade the sewer infrastructure as well. We've also got a horrible uh, asphalt covering on that road, no sidewalks and it's just a, not a safe place to walk and, and uh, not particularly a safe place to drive either. Um, we had uh, been working on that through, uh, through our planning and development team to, to actually do all the, the work ahead of time. Uh, so that we'd be ready, but we always had an issue with funding for the project. That's why it was always a next year project. We just weren't able to make it happen. And so when the MEET pro program came up, we knew that uh, this was a suitable project as well, and we applied quickly. Uh, I think it's worth noting that uh, when the program was announced, our council was able to act quickly because we have an in-house planning and development team that did all the design work, all the consultation with business, all the pre-work, it was ready to go. So when we talk about projects being shovel ready, that's what we mean. We were ready for, for that project. So it's not a next year project anymore. That project is a this year project. And uh, if the weather accommodates, it will be completed uh, this year. So these are two very important projects for the uh, the health of our, of our community. And uh, I really want 
to, through you, Mr. Cox, to the provincial government to express our gratitude for this funding so that we can make these projects happen. And I want you to know that this was an opportunity our council didn't want to waste. We wanted to act quickly. And one last point. Um, when we had uh, went through the public bid process and, and collected bids from various firms, uh, ultimately the firms that were selected were local firms. And I think that's really important. And at a time when we are facing the greatest health and economic crisis of our generation, uh, the investment